Hey, what's happening, everybody? My name is Hayden Adams, and in this episode, I want to show you how to create a fully responsive HTML5 canvas from Animate and drop it into WordPress. All right, our first step is to start in Adobe Animate. I'm working in the HTML5 canvas setting. Now keep in mind in the new settings, this is the one part that still kind of bugs me, that in Adobe Animate, make sure that your platform type is not ActionScript 3.0. That's the Swift world that is circa pre-2012 when Steve Jobs killed Flash effectively. So we have to work in HTML5 Canvas at all times. What I have here, I'm gonna close this new window, is a basic timeline. I have a red square that just moves slowly across the page until it gets to about six and a half seconds and then it resets over and over again. Also, when you wanna export this, there's a few settings I recommend. Under File, under Publish Settings, I'm gonna go over to the image settings. By default, this export documents as texture is checked in the new version of Animate, and I'm gonna uncheck it. And of course, when I uncheck it, it asks to export image assets as what's called a sprite sheet. I don't wanna do it that way, so I'm gonna make sure I uncheck both export documents and export image assets. In the basic setting, I wanna make one big key setting. I wanna make sure this is make responsive and it's set to both and scale to fill visible area. This is important as we create fully responsive HTML5 canvas animations. And with that, I'm gonna publish. And let's take a look. And as you can see, this design with these four dots and the red square is fully responsive. So depending upon how I make my browser size, it's either gonna to catch to the right or the width or to the height down below. What I wanna do next is I wanna write some code that keeps a box of the perfect size and dimension. That way, whenever we size our browser, it's gonna hold the shape and size. But the first step is, of course, to take a look and make sure that the design is fitting and is responsive inside of a browser. We've got that checked off, so let's do our next step. So what happens when you publish it is it exports an HTML file, a JavaScript file, images if you have it. Now I just have basically a red square, looks pretty awesome, and this red square.fla. Note you do not have to upload the FLA file, just the images, the JavaScript, and the HTML. From here, I'm gonna do is, I've got my little CyberDuck open right here, and I created a folder on my WordPress site I just showed earlier in the video, and I made a folder called Animate. And I'm gonna upload my files. I'm gonna grab the images, red square, and HTML, drag them over, and it will ask me, since I've already put it once before, do you want to overwrite? And the answer is yes. Now. I can't just run this file as is. I have to go into WordPress and create an iframe and one other little thing to help this scale no matter what size I have open in a browser. That's our next step. All right, so I am in WordPress. Now just so you're aware of this, my theme that I'm running is just the basic 2017. I was gonna use 2019, but there's too much movement and I wanted to show a little bit of a fixed width and then it makes it smaller, so I jumped into the 2017 default theme on WordPress. I also installed one other little plugin. You can use this with the new version of WordPress 5, which is this Project Gutenberg, it has a whole different setting for posts and pages. I just added a classic editor when I went back to the original default, as most of you probably are still working on an older or legacy version of WordPress. If you are working in the Gutenberg or version 5.0, totally fine. You can totally do the same thing. It just requires a couple extra steps, and I'm sticking with this classic editor. So what I want to do first, though, is I want to go into my editor. 
Now, if you are running a theme that does have a custom CSS area, that's where you wanna go. But since I am running this default appearance in this default theme, I don't have an ability to add any extra custom CSS aside from the appearance and the editor. I'm gonna write this at the very, very, very bottom of the CSS. If you are new to code, yes, this does require some coding, but once you put this part in, it doesn't have to ever change. So if you are running a custom theme, most of them, like from Theme Forest, do have an area to say custom CSS. So I'm gonna write something, and I'm gonna say period animate container. This is gonna be designed specifically for my Adobe Animate projects. In CSS, I have to click or type the open bracket, which then gives me a default close bracket. I'm gonna hit the return key. I'm then gonna say position colon relative semicolon. The next part I'm gonna say is margin bottom colon 10 pixels. Just wanna give a little space below my Adobe Animate project to whatever's next below it. You can change this to 20, 30, or just say zero. But the most important piece is that I say position relative. The next thing I wanna say after this is animate container iframe. Oops, all lowercase. I'm an old school programmer, so I always will use what's called camel case, where I don't make the first letter uppercase, but then I make the second one be uppercase. Now when you code, keep in mind that everything we're typing here is case sensitive. So if you type an uppercase C, our next step is gonna require an uppercase C as well. So animate container and then iframe. We're gonna use something brand new. In this area though, the iframe, if I type the open bracket, I'm gonna type a couple extra things. Position, I'm gonna now say absolute. Hold this guy in place and then add a semicolon. Top is gonna to be zero. Left is gonna be zero. Width is going to be 100% and height will be 100%. Now, if you are, have a square design, you're in great shape. I have a rectangle, mine set to 1000 pixels by 500. But remember, this is going to be a responsive design. So what I'm basically saying is everything inside the animate container mimic the size, width, and height. Since we're gonna set the size or the ratio of the size in the animate container on the next screen, it's gonna then pull the width and height and pull it up to the animate container. Once you have this typed in, either in the editor or the custom CSS section of your theme, hit update or hit save to lock this in. And now let's create a page and put our Adobe Animate project in it. All right, I am now in the pages section. For this example, make sure you use the text and not the visual. Once again, if using the Gutenberg or uh, WordPress 5.0, this is a little different. And in a future edition, I'll show you the version 5.0 of this. But in the classic editor, I'm gonna focus on the text area. So I'm gonna say new, new red square, first a random title. And in this text area, I'm gonna type the following less than sign div class equals, and this is the same class I had with a period before, I'm gonna say animate container and hit the closed quote, if I can hit the right key, it's amazing sometimes. And here's the, where the magic comes in. I'm gonna say style, and this is what's called inline CSS. Normally we don't do this, but in this case, since it's a custom element, I am gonna use some custom CSS. I'm gonna say style equals quote, padding dash bottom. And I'm gonna say, what is the percent or the ratio of my design? Now I made mine pretty easy. If we go back to animate, there it is. 
I made mine 1,000 by 500. So if we grab Mr. Calculator, there it is. And if we say, this case, 500 divided by 1,000, oh, did I just hit the multiply sign? 500 divided by 1,000, our ratio is 50%. So I'm gonna use that same number, bye bye calculator, and hello Safari. I'm gonna say 50%, there it is, it. there it is, 50%. Make sure I hit the right keystroke there. It's amazing sometimes how I can miss the keys. And I'm gonna close it with a quote. So I have div class animate container style padding bottom 50% and I can close this piece up. Now if I write code, I always like to open and close right away. So to close this word div, I'm gonna hit less than sign slash div. That holds my space between the two of it. Now in the middle right here is where I'm gonna write the word less than sign iframe and say SRC equals quote, quote, I'm gonna come back to that area and say, whoa, wath. How about width? That's a better one. Width equals 1000 and height equals 500. And one more time I'll say style I might have this written in my CSS prior, but since I'm using the default setting of WordPress, this is a manual piece I have to put in. I'm gonna say border colon zero. Normally in most of the designs or themes you work with, the border will be gone on an iframe, but in this case, since I'm using a default setting, it's not there, so I have to type that piece in manually. And then I'm gonna say, less than sign slash iframe. There we go. Now note that SRC, which stands for source, or when I teach, I like to say circ. Now I have to figure out where that video or that animation I uploaded to my website was. Now I have it copied and pasted on a different screen, so I'm gonna bring it in. Now yours, of course, will be different. My company is Nautilus Design, so it's nautilusdesigns.com slash website slash wordpress dash five slash animate slash red square. So when I did all of this, what happens is, I'll first say publish, just to lock in my changes, but this div class holds the space for the iframe. And because we use the 50% ratio, it's gonna pad the box at half the height of the width. In this case, I have 1,000 by 500. Let's take a look and see how this all looks. All right, oh, let's get an animate out of there. There we go, now we're looking better. So once again, I am on the new page, the new, new red square, and like magic, this sits inside of WordPress, and it moves, that little six second kind of red square. Now, of course, it looks good here, but how does it look? when I resize it. And there we go. And like magic, this works flawlessly as it moves from small to big. And this is how you can incorporate fully responsive HTML5 Adobe Animate file inside of WordPress.